Please don't break. Please don't break. Welcome back to the shop. I'm Jason, right here, we have Project Black Pearl. In our last episode, we tore the motor down to just before setting cam timing, and we are ready to move on with getting our chiming chains off, our oil pan off, our engine mounts, our power steering lines. In preparation for this video, I've worked on a ton of cleanup. All the parts that I've taken off, I've run through my ultrasonic cleaner, the ones that fit, and or scrubbed them by hand. And as you can see, this upper timing cover looks fantastic. Inside and out, looks nearly brand new. I still need to powder coat that valve cover or that timing cover, like this one. This is the one I picked up from the junkyard and got all cleaned up in preparation. First things first, we need to get our cam gears loosened up so that we can get our cam blocks on and get these guys in time. So let's, let's get over to doing that. To get our sensor gears off, we're gonna need a what is this, a 24 millimeter socket, and then we're gonna need a 27 millimeter wrench to sit on the cam. All of our bolts here and nuts are left-hand thread, which means righty-loosey, lefty, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. No, those are both the same thing. Lefty-tighty, right? I, I, I can't say it backwards. They're left-hand threads, so... Righty Lucy, that's what I'm looking for. Righty Lucy, yeah. So hold your cam, there we go. These guys shouldn't be all that tight. Ah, Shikes. Well, if you move the Vanos gear, oil's gonna shoot out of it, all over your face and your cameras. So I'm gonna take five, I'm gonna clean all this off and be right back. I need a drink and a shower. Well, if you're curious to know, Dawn dish soap does a pretty good job of getting engine oil out of a beard. I don't know where the oil came out. I'm gonna to have to review this on uh, film, but I think it shot straight up because my whole beard was saturated from the bottom and down my chest, all over my mic. But I mean, if Dawn dish soap is safe for a baby duck, it's safe for me, so I'm good with that. Lesson learned here. So I'm fairly certain these are the same part numbers, but I am gonna separate everything into driver and passenger just for posterity's sake. Now we can head over to our bank five through eight, or not bank, our bank two, five through eight exhaust cam. Okay, hold your cam. Man, that's tight. Your intake cam on bank five through eight has some pressure on it. So as soon as that bolt released, the cam rotated over. So we will have to, on this side, advance it to get our cam block on. Our kit from German Auto Solutions comes nicely marked here, this billet aluminum block. It comes with a little wing nut to lock the block down. There should be no pressure to get this guy in here. Now that we're all unbolted, you don't want to use these blocks, or even really the factory blocks, to try and break the cams free. You want to do the counter hold, which means you have to have the oil rails off. So with these blocks, you want both sides touching the cylinder head, and you want to push the block towards the front of the car into the groove, and then lock it down. A for exhaust or OUS, and it won't lock into the groove until the cam is in the right spot. Here's our groove here. You can see this one is pushed forward. So we've got to rotate the cam just a smidge. See how it's sliding in right there? Close. Right there. 
Now it slides forward just like that. And I'll use a mirror to verify that it's down on both sides. And I'll put my wing nut on. Now that we've got our cams all tied up, we can take a break from those guys for a bit and we can go down to the bottom, get all our stuff down here situated. We're gonna start with the driver's side motor mount here. With my power steering line loose and all of this stuff out of the way, you can see we have really good access to the 16 mil on top. Over here on the passenger side, you see just down past the AC compressor there is our other top bolt or top nut. Swivel with a locking extension is great for this. And I'm just gonna break them free and get them from the bottom so I don't have to try to sneak them out the top. And while we're at it, let's get our power steering lines off and out of the way. We need to start by removing this line first. That's the back bolt. That'll give us better access to our front bolt that will be much easier to get to once we drop the subframe. Well, I for forgot a uh, pretty important step before you go and lower the uh, subframe. You gotta support the engine somehow. Thankfully, I've got this engine support. If you don't have an engine support, you can support it from the transmission. I really don't like that, but it's possible. Now I had to modify this one to fit on my X5, which means it doesn't quite fit on here just right. And I've got these standoffs, but with some rubber isolators under here, I found I can make it work. The BMW tool supports the engine from the front and the back with a load leveler. That's really nice, but this is gonna hold the engine up just fine. So underneath here, I've started by getting access to my rear subframe, pulling these little plastic covers off. I'm going to take the metal heat shield off over here. I already got the screws out of it. That way I have better access up to my steering box. See, I might wanna just take that off, get it completely out of my way. See, this guy pulls off, we've got one, two, three screws, and then this one stays attached to our positive lead here. On this side, I'm just gonna loosen this side of the positive lead so that when we drop the subframe, it will have somewhere to go. And that's gonna definitely need to get cleaned. Just drop that in the ultrasonic cleaner. It's not even on right now, but it'll soak a little bit. Now we've got much better access to the back of our steering box to get our gear off. I always like to hit these with WD-40 before I start to go to town on them. You've got a nut and a bolt. And thankfully, where it's currently positioned, looks like I'll be able to get it off right there. Yep. You bolt out, and then you're gonna spread the uh, gear open just a little bit. Looks like our nut is actually captive, which is really nice. Well, it seems like the oil leak sufficiently lubricated this so that it's just popping right off. You really don't want to try to drop the oil pan with your timing pin in there because, well, it's not going to drop. We're going to take our four lower bolts. These, I believe, are E10 or E12 to the back of the oil pan. Before I drop the subframe, I'm just working my way around trying to get some of these accessible bolts out. We've got these two 13s on the back here holding the power lead on one side and on the other side. It's just a big bolt. Then it should just be a minefield of 10 mils. We are going to have to drop the oil pump as well before we can get the pan down. So don't get too overzealous like me. Get too far into it and go, oh no, I still have to drop that. You need to pull your starter lead off as well. On this side though, you have your oil filter drain back. Do you have to get that off and you're gonna want new seals for it. I did not order seals for it initially. I had to order those yesterday. They'll be here next week. But you can get the pan back on even with those without that line on there. To get the pump out, we gotta start by getting our cover off here. These are 10 mil, and these are also lock nuts. I'm gonna go back on with a little bit of blue Loctite when we're going back together. Now, before we take the pump down or unbolt it, let's measure our chain deflection. Push all the way over, we're at 
20 millimeters. If we go all the way over to this side, we're at 10. So it looks like we have about 10 mil of deflection. This side has closer to 12, which is actually right within spec, I believe. I think it's 10 plus or minus two. So that's what we're gonna shoot for going back together with our new chain. Let's see. Yep, conventional thread. Slide our gear off. Now we've got three 13s to drop the pump. And if I had to guess, we're gonna have some oil come out. You got one on the back hiding back here. We'll lock tight that guy, that's a lock nut. This one on the passenger side with the bolt. This is our adjustment point here. Wow, it's got a lot of Loctite on it or something. Oh boy. It looks like it's just covered in Loctite. Thank God. I thought it was pulling threads out. Definitely gonna run a thread chase through that sucker. Goodness gracious. Now, don't forget, you've got your drain back tube. And these both have O-rings. One O-ring will go here, one O-ring will go here, and one will go in the pump. Now we can buzz out our last two bolts. Yep, just like that. Before you drop the subframe, disconnect your headlight leveling harness up front here. Otherwise, you'll wind up breaking that. The headlight level bracket is attached to the subframe, so we're solid there. back of the pan here you see all that goo that is from what I'm guessing was at some point a coolant leak out of the valley pan that runs back out of the drain this is coming together really quick I'm liking today's progress you don't have to drop the subframe to do the engine mounts it just happened to be what I'm doing them here you've got two 13 millimeter nuts on the bottom that hold them to the subframe and that one 16 millimeter nut that holds it to the engine bracket you can see with these motor mounts, they were totally toast, cracked all the way around. This one had leaked all over my driveway, and you can see just how much the motor mount winds up sinking over time and compressing that rubber and hydraulic space that's in there. Really, really was important to get these done now and well worth the investment of time because it's way easier when we're doing this other stuff. You know, another one of those great while you're in their spots is your oil filter lines, they drain down through the engine mount bracket and inside of that bracket on the top side here, there are two O-rings. So what we're doing is I've got an extension on a swivel at the bottom, snaked up around the header and then through the two brake lines here on the ABS pump and another swivel up to the top on a 13 mil we're gonna to try to break this guy free. We're gonna replace those lines, or not the lines, but the uh, O-rings, because with the timing cover and the alternator and everything out of the way, this is the best access, well, we're probably ever gonna to have to these. Now would be a fantastic time to do headers to be able to get to some of these bolts, but, well, that's not happening this time. Now, if you happen to be doing any type of performance build on this engine, Take a look at Speedhaven's website. They have an AN adapter, which I actually have for the M5 that hasn't been installed yet. Let me go find that. Check this beauty out. I know it's in the bag. You've got your adapters at your oil filter housing and then your AN adapter down at the block. This allows you to run in line a cooler that this engine doesn't have. The M5 has a cooler, but it's coolant uh, driven in the uh, valley, which is not great. I've waited on doing this because I really want to do an LS in that car before I spend a ton of money on the S62. So I might just save these for this car to maybe do an oil cooler at some point on it. Either way, if you're looking for performance mods, not sponsored, not anything like that, dude just makes fantastic products. Take a look at his website. I've got it here on the screen. Okay, with the retainer nut off, we can see about levering these guys off of there. That worked out. And I'm glad I put a drain bucket down there because there was in fact oil still. Awesome.
and a bunch of goo that we're going to want to clean. Oh, what was that? That was a wool filter cap. Big chunk just fell off in here. Crikey, now i got to find that. We're just going to put that back together for now and order a cap. One of these, just like that. One of these little plastic holders that hold the filter in popped off. Awesome. Dang it. So rings are still pliable. But again, these are really tough to get to with everything in place. So now is the time to do it. Here's our little C double D bracket. It goes over top of them. Make sure you lube these O-rings before you try to stab it. I'm just using an open bottle that I have for my wife's car. Nice thin 0W30. Then we're going to put the one on the back first, which is this one with this extra bend. Our little bracket is going to have to go on both lines at the same time and then drop them down because it goes down there. So maybe one at a time isn't going to be the option I thought it was going to be. Our rings fit in there nicely though. Again, this is another reason why doing this right now versus with all the other equipment in here makes so much sense. There we go. That's actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Then we're going to take our lock nut, make it good and tight. Being a lock nut, I'm going to throw a little blue Loctite on there. One elbow click, two elbow clicks. All right, now we're ready to finally start ripping these chains and guides and everything off of here. Go ahead and clip our zip tie. Let that guy fall. You can see just how much play this chain had. Could nearly go all the way over to touch. There was no way you're going to get great tension on there. Pop our U-guide. Got these E10s. There we go. The oil feed line was making it difficult for the U-guide to come off. And on our U-guide, we've got this bushing up here. We've got an oil seal down here. Behind the U-guide area we have a gasket. A piece of plastic broke off. Driver side guide clips on on the bottom to this lower pin. Like snap fit. Well, I guess it literally snap fit right off. Now that I'm seeing these guides off and in person, um, they definitely <laughs> have seen better days. I'll show you once they're on the bench over here, just how bad it all looks. Come on. There it is. Oh, I guess I could have unbolted the oil separator. I don't think it was sealing very well. The fitting is completely cracked off of that. This uh, squeezy crimp fitting. That guy's all jacked. All right. Oh, whoa, whoa. There goes a piece. It's like that falling off of my hand. You're looking for a simple way to clamp these down that won't be damaging to your chain or anything. These squeezy clamps for woodworking really work well. Yeah, that's the technical definition. Squeezy clamps. Another 11 on this engine? No way. Then we can take our intake bolt out and we'll take our gears and everything off together. Obviously don't use a hammer to take these out if uh, you're going to be reusing them. I got whole new tensioning units instead of just the caps. So I'm not reusing them. The O-ring seal on the bottom looks like they both stayed in the cylinder heads. I got new ones on my new units. All right, and our last, while we're in theirs, we're going to be replacing the camshaft seals, this gasket behind here, and our one-way check valves. We're gonna need to take our vano solenoids off, which means I get to test my new vano solenoid socket. Obviously, you could use a uh, wrench here. Pick this guy up on Amazon. Link will be down in the description. I'll be able to use this to install my solenoids 
since you don't get this socket with the German Auto Solutions kit, I bought it in separately. All right, these guys are held on with E10s. And we've got new cam seals as well. And then here is our one-way check valve for our oil. Got to decide if I'm going to run these bad boys through the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. Kind of having too much fun with that. Uh-oh. This one's stuck. So this should just slide right off of these cam seals. But if you've got a groove worn into here, you are gonna have trouble like what I'm having right now, which would also mean that you have the potential of losing oil pressure inside of the Vanos control here. So this bank one intake Vanos may not have been operating to full capacity either. Well, after, I'm not exactly sure how long, uh, many explicatives, a couple thrown tools, a lot of frustration, I got the um, distributor housing off. Thankfully, it doesn't appear to be damaged inside. There's some light grooving inside of here, which is normal. As long as you can't get a fingernail or anything stuck in it, you're good. The reason it wouldn't come off is inside here, you have your oil distribution passages. Well, those go through the cam, and then you have these uh, they're called recta rings or recta seal metal rings. And my forward ring had snapped the tooth off. So it was expanding and getting jammed up in here. So as soon as I opened it up, it got stuck in there and I couldn't get it on or off. Where this side over here, they should all just boop, 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 slide right on. Uh-oh and slide right off. Did I just break this one? No, okay. So just be aware the that can happen. What I wound up doing was shining a flashlight in the front here and I could just see this ring stuck in there. And I used a really small pick, just the tip of it, <laughs> to uh, get in here and I pushed it out. I couldn't tilt it and get this off because the pick was in the way. So what I had to do was just gently push the ring until it wasn't jammed up in that opening. What a nightmare that was. I was already shopping for parts. I was checking the local junkyard to see if they had any newcomers of one of these. And man, was I freaking out thinking, this is a $150 part, I don't want to buy that. I've already bought everything else, thankfully came off. All right, so let's take a look at what we have. At the end of the day, I'm very glad we decided to do this and that the cleanliness inside the motor was not an indicator of these being done. I do think that at some point in the lifespan of this vehicle, it was overheated. Um, maybe not to the point of cylinder heads, which would be my first guess, maybe back in the day. And the reason that I think that is when you've been working on cars long enough, and you've worked on enough overheats, you know what it smells like when oil goes from fuel laden and just um, carbon soaked to cooked. And what happens is all of the little bolts that are sitting in oil all of the time, like a fresh Cuban cigar, they don't let go of that smell. So I've taken a number of things apart and gone, whoo, ooh, that's gross that burnt oil smell was there. Now, I'm not having any running issues um, and I didn't have any running issues purchasing it, so I'm not saying that was a problem. I'm just saying something I noticed over time. We had that issue getting our distributor block off of bank one through four. That was because the rector ring seal had failed and broken apart, which means we were probably losing some oil pressure to the intake vanos, either on the um, expand or retract cycle, I don't know. Not enough to make a fault, but probably not enough to make a balanced power output. As far as our guides, it's a good thing we're doing these. So our center guide is usually the one that goes first. And you can see here on the bottom, it's worn all the way through, almost to the point of contacting 
the metal. Thankfully, it's not on the tension side. It's on the, you know, it's bank five through eight side. So while yes, it's wearing through, normally you'd wear through on the bottom and it'd start eating the metal underneath and it would start pushing aluminum through the engine. Not a great thing. My oil separator separated into multiple pieces. This housing up here probably wasn't sealing all that well. And then our timing guide on this side broke clean off of the oil separator here where it's supposed to be mounted. It has some nominal wear for sure. And then both of our secondary chain tensioners up top have a decent amount of wear. So a lot of particulate matter floating through the engine that just didn't need to be in there. This is a fantastic time to be doing this. When I take apart my Vanos drive units, I'll measure to see just how far out of spec they are as far as the crimping pressure. And we'll see what everything looks like. We're gonna end this one here on the teardown. Next episode, we're going to rebuild the Vanos units, replace our recta seals, and we'll get all of our timing gear installed back on. That'll probably just be an episode by itself or video by itself. There's lots of little rings and stuff to deal with here. So thanks for watching. Take a look at some of my merch down below. Help support the channel, keep these projects going. Working on cars isn't cheap and a YouTube channel working on cars is about the dumbest thing you could do. It's just a money pit, but man, is it fun. And I really enjoy responding to comments. I respond to everybody's comments. And if you've made it this far, put down in the comments, I made it. Thanks for watching, really appreciate it.